Everyone's got a price. Welcome to Three Count Commentaries. Today we're going to be talking about Ted DiBiase and uh, defrauding the federal government of hundreds of thousands of dollars, one of his sons, for millions of dollars. Um, our, so this is a two-part story. Uh, the first beginning begins on November the 18th, 2021, uh, from the Mississippi Free Press. The other one is from 2022. So to give you a bit of a catch up of what's going on, it says Mississippi State Auditor Shad White has referred a case to the state's attorney general featuring NFL Hall of Famer Brett Favre and nine others who received millions in welfare dollars that should have gone to help the state's poorest. Uh, they're talking about Brett Favre, the uh, NFL football player. So the Republican auditor sent demand letters to Favre and others last month. Giving them 30 days to pay back the money, to pay back money. The NFL star, a Kiln, Mississippi native who now lives in Hattiesburg, paid back $600,000 on October 12, 2021 after receiving White's letter, but not the full $828,000 White had demanded, which included Favre's, which included interest. Oh, okay. So, um, I guess Brett Favre paid back what he, what he owed, but the government was like, nah. There's, there's interest on that, bud. Pfft, whatever. Um, it says, so it, it talks primarily about Brett Favre in this article. But so what we are interested in is the Ted DiBiase part, right? It says, since the demands letter went out, a spokesman for White's office told the Mississippi Free Press last night. I hate when they say last night and just put a date. No additional payment has been made outside of the $600,000 from Favre, including the other individuals who or entities who received demands to pay the TNF TANF funds. Those additional individuals or entities include former WWE wrestler Ted DiBiase Sr., known as the Million Dollar Man, who said who White said must pay back seven hundred and twenty two thousand dollars. <laughs> I'm I'm rounding down, of course, seven hundred and twenty two thousand dollars that his Christian ministry, Heart of David Ministries, received. DiBiase's son, Ted Jr a retired WWE wrestler who White said owes $3.9 million. $3.9 million. DiBiase's other retired WWE wrestler son, Brett DiBiase, who White said owes $226,000. Brett DiBiase was among six indicted in early June 2020 and admitted to his role in defrauding the state's welfare system as part of December 2020 plea deal. So <clears throat> Brett DiBiase already gave up the ghost and admitted that he had done something wrong. This is absolutely abysmal, of course. Um, I feel bad for these guys. So, the second article is from May 10th, 2022. Welfare agency sues Brett Favre, 37 others over millions in Mississippi TANF funds. So it says, the Mississippi Department of Human Services suing 38 people, including NFL Hall of Famer Brett Favre and retired WWE wrestler Ted DiBiase Sr. in an effort to recoup millions in misspent welfare funds that should have gone to needy families. Why didn't they put WWE Hall of Famer? Ted DiBiase is in WWE Hall of Fame. So the civil suit stems from a massive welfare fraud scheme involving former Mississippi Department of Health officials that the operators of several Mississippi nonprofits and other alleged beneficiaries of the misspent temporary assistance for needy families money. Um, it says the lawsuit demands $23.3 million from John Davis, the former MDHS head who now faces 20 felony counts for his role and authorizing over $77 million in illegal TANF spending through nonprofits run by Nancy New and son Zach New, from whom the state seeks $19.4 million and $2.1 million respectively. There's a lot of money that gets slushed around in these welfare programs. This is why I'm against welfare programs, by the way. Try not to make it political, but... How could you be for this stuff when, you know, we saw all sorts of people filing for stimulus money who had no business getting stimulus money? You know, this is the kind of stuff that, you know, is unfortunate, but it's happening out there in the real world. People are taking advantage of this thing. And um, it's, it's real sad. It says, uh, 
on the, on the case of DiBiase, who is our focus today. So the auditor also said late last year that former WWE wrestler Ted DiBiase Sr., known popularly as the Million Dollar Man, owed $722,000 that his Christian ministry had received from misallocated funds. White said, White said his son's retired WWE wrestler Ted DiBiase Jr. and WWE wrestler Brett DiBiase also owed the state money. Um, said the auditor referred to DiBiase's um, Favre the, and the News, Davis and others to Mississippi Attorney General for civil proceedings in November 2021. This is absolutely abysmal. This this is really bad. So they're not going. They're not just facing criminal charges. They're also getting civilly sued. This is an absolute shame. It's an absolute shame. All right. So there is uh, another article from WLOX.com. I guess it's a local newspaper from or a local news station in Mississippi. It says at the center of the welfare scandal is the state's decision to contract with news, the news, the two people who are being sued, nonprofit Mississippi Community Education Center and other nonprofit called Family Resource Center of North Mississippi to run a state sanctioned program called Families First from Mississippi. John Davis was the director of the Mississippi Department of Human Services at the time, answering to the governor who appointed him, Phil Bryant. Christy Webb ran the nonprofit in the North. And by 2017, the year of Davis's administration, the state was making unprecedented upfront multi-million dollar payments to the nonprofits. Most of the money came from a flexible federal block called the TANF or Temporary Assistance for Needy Families. The lawsuit seeks to establish that Davis and Nancy New agreed together to disregard federal laws that stipulate how states may spend federal welfare dollars. Davis would push millions to the two nonprofits which used the funds on pet projects and in exchange, the nonprofits would pay for things that Davis wanted, such as hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of contracts to his family members and wrestler friends and luxury travel arrangements for himself. The lawsuit says that illegal quid pro quo agreement and conspiracy between Davis and the news resulted in all of the transfers of the TANF funds for non TANF purposes. The Mississippi Department of Human Services is asking the court for damages of $23.3 million from Davis, $19.4 million from Nancy New and her nonprofit. These figures represent many of the same expenditures. But the lawsuit also asserts that the people and organizations who received funding from the nonprofits who are named as defendants are also liable because they knew they were receiving payment directly, indirectly rather, from MDH, MDHS, which is the Mississippi Department of Human Services, which was not designed or authorized to donate public funds for the private enrichment of healthy, of wealthy individuals or organizations. The lawsuit also says none of the recipients possessed special skills that would allow them to be paid as a contractor for the state's anti-poverty program and that they they knew they were selected despite lacking experience or qualifications in TANF programming and without a competitive selection process. Let's pause right here. This is what we call a, uh, a political patronage system. Um, a, a lot of programs, especially in urban areas, work this way, where in order to get a grant or in order to get some kind of money, you're supposed to have some kind of special training. Uh, so you'll often see, I hate to use them as an example, like Black Lives Matter. They will claim to have some kind of special knowledge, um, often in anti-racism or something like that. That would make it possible for the government or some other entity, a school, a library or something like that, to give them money to come on as contractors to teach about this thing or to hold programming about this thing. It is a classic money laundering scheme. It is a classic money laundering scheme. Very, very rarely do you have these people have any sort of special skills um, that is worthy of them making hundreds of thousands of dollars um, teaching somebody anything. This is how people like Robin D'Angelo, who if you've ever heard of her, this is how she makes money. The uh, Ibrahim X. Kendi, that guy. This is how these people make money. Now, they don't use TANF and they don't go to, you know, through that system. 
because that system is always under fire because, you know, Republicans want to get rid of it and they're always auditing in that system. They'll go through the universities. So they'll say, uh, hey, university, we want to teach about anti-racism or whatever. You pay me $40,000 an hour. And then the university will be like, okay, sure. And they'll give you $40,000 to come do programming or anti-racism as if you're, you know, that's something that you're, that's really going to change the world. You know, so that's how these systems work. You know, you'll get hired as a contractor to do something, but it's a classic money laundering scheme. You're just a friend of somebody. Uh, I think Kwame Kilpatrick did something similar to this. Well, he, you know, bring his friend on as a contractor for something else. And it's basically just, a, you move money from, you move taxpayer money from one place to the other. It's real horse shit. Let's uh, continue. <clears throat> the civil complaint represents just the first step of the state's pursuit of repayment and attorneys may amend the filing to add defendants when the discovery process is underway. The circumstances outlined in the lawsuit echo Mississippi Today's reporting in its investig investigative series, The Back Channel, including Brett Favre's involvement in the use of MDMH funds to purchase personal investments in the pharmaceutical startup Prevacaris, Prevacus, which was developing a treatment for concussions. Favre already knew that Nancy New had access to millions in few strings attached federal grant funds because he got her to pay $5 million towards the new volleyball stadium that the quarterback was credited with helping build at the alma mater university of Southern Mississippi text show. Now let's skip to the part where we're talking about the DBICs. Cause I think that was a pretty good, um, that laid the groundwork. Cause they talk extensively about, um, Brett Favre mainly because, you know, he's the, he's the major guy here. It says a Hines County grand jury reindicted Davis in March of on new bribery conspiracy charges. The new indictment says he acted in concert with or aided, among others, his sister Twyla Smith and her husband, the brother-in-law Brian Smith. But officials have not yet charged any of the Smiths. After developing a close relationship with Ted, Teddy DiBiase Jr., Davis elevated the wrestler within the department and arranged for him and his companies to receive payment from the nonprofits, the lawsuit says. The wrestler received over $3 million in anti-poverty funds to, among other things, quote, address the multiple needs of inner city youth. The lawsuit reads, though he possessed no qualifications to provide TANF services, he re received duplicate payments of $70,000 from each nonprofit. But not, but quote, not in exchange for services actually performed by Teddy DiBiase, the lawsuit reads. Teddy DiBiase, who spent most of his workday hours accompanying John Davis at MDHS offices and on trips, made no substantial effort to supply any such contractual services, either as an individual or through any organization or entity, the lawsuit reads. The lawsuit says Nancy News, other son, Jess New, an attorney and director of the Mississippi State Oil and Gas Board helped arrange legal entities for Teddy DiBiase so the wrestler could receive more welfare funds. Davis also directed New to transfer $30,000 in TANF funds to the Northeast Mississippi Football Coaches Association, the lawsuit says, as a reward for the organization selecting Teddy DiBiase as its 2018 banquet speaker. This shit. Patronage. This guy was in government. That's why I'm always railing against the government. Teddy DiBiase's brother, Brett DiBiase, also received duplicate payments from each of the nonprofits, totaling $600,000, and never performed services of any significance which served any lawful TANF purpose. Brett DiBiase, who also went to a luxury rehab clinic in Malibu, on the nonprofit's dime and was paid as a TANF contractor while he was there is only TANF subrecipient to face criminal charges. He pleaded guilty to fraud in 2020 and agreed to cooperate with the prosecutors. Oh boy. The lawsuit says Teddy DiBiase urged Davis to divert 1.7 million in TANF funds to his father, Ted DiBiase Sr.'s ministry called Heart of David. The department contracted directly with the ministry to provide services for eligible needy people after quote after TANF after receiving TANF funds pursuant to those contracts. However, the subsequently ignored all TANF purposes and all of the interests of all potential beneficiaries of lawful TANF services. Ted DiBiase senior used some of the money for his personal expenses, did not maintain any personnel files 
or a financial management system. And while his organization maintained a website, one of the only visible public facing products of the program, quote, the website content was merely created at MDHS expense by an employee of MDHS as ordered by John Davis. The lawsuit reads Davis Web and Family Resources Center employee Amy Davis also arranged for the nonprofit to pay Ted DiBiase Sr. a lump sum of $250,000 for motivational speaking. Motivational speaking. Motivational speaking. Lectures. Uh, when he received the check, Ted DiBiase Sr. emailed his sons, look what I got today, the lawsuit says. God damn it. God damn it. The lawsuit also asks for almost $2.9 million in damages from Teddy DiBiase and the same from his companies, almost $2 million from Ted DiBiase Sr., $1.7 million from Heart of David, $824,000 from Brett DiBiase, Forty-eight thousand from his company Restore Two LLC, and one hundred and sixty thousand dollars from Rise in Malibu. The lawsuit says Teddy DiBiase Jr. also urged Davis to divert TANF funds to a consulting and management services contractor, Adam Such. Davis, but got Webb to pay Such two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. The lawsuit says to pretend to operate a quote center for actionalists and a quote referral network. Though, quote, nothing of substance was expected or delivered by such. Davis similarly arranged for a ton of money to go to Teddy DiBiase's business associate, Nick Coughlin, an aspiring actor and reality TV contestant who worked for powerful law firm Butler Snow and in the Mississippi attorney's office in 2020, though he is not an attorney. His degree is in business and marketing from Mississippi College, according to his resume. His resume says his skills are in marketing, brand management, economic development, and motivational speaking. They're just getting all of their friends involved. This is literally hungry, hungry hippos. Everybody that these motherfuckers know is getting involved with this with this fucking scheme. This is you got to be kidding me, man. Are you shitting me? As I sit here and read this. This is this is heartbreaking. You know how much I love Teddy Biasi, man. This is sad as fuck. You know, this is sad as fuck. You know, but I, I'm not surprised. It was so easy to do. It was so easy to do because you know the guy who's controlling the money. You know the guy who's controlling the money. All he's got to do is point and shoot, and that's it. Now, they could have at least tried to perform some type of fucking service, but they didn't even do that. At least other motherfuckers when they money laundering, they tried to perform a service. They at least try. These people didn't even try. They're not going to prison, though. Only one of them going to prison. That's uh, Brett DiBiase. The rest of them are just going to have to pay the money back. This is, this is so fucked up. This is fucked up. Um... But this is government for you, you know. Hey, we want to help needy families. But first, we got to give the money to all these middlemen, all these preachers and uh, people who work in nonprofits. And it's the nonprofits. It's almost always the nonprofits. This is why, you know, so much money goes into these hoods and it never it never comes out of the other end. You know, the government says, oh, we're going to give all this money to, I hate to use them again, but Black Lives Matter or NAACP or whomever and they're going to go and do things in the neighborhoods and almost nothing ever changes or maybe they'll throw a barbecue maybe they'll have a a corner party or something maybe they'll clean up some streets maybe they're going to pick up some some wendy's bags and garbage out of out of the lot vacant lot somewhere but they haven't really done anything you know that's how nonprofits are such a goddamn mm. Such a money laundering scheme, and not all of them. Don't don't get me wrong. Not all um, law, you know, uh, nonprofits are money laundering. Um, most of them are supposed to provide some type of service, and that's the purpose of a nonprofit. A nonprofit, for those of you who don't know, is a non governmental organization, or what they call an NGO. The purpose of this NGO is to be socially and community based. You know, there's tons of nonprofits that exist in the world. For a long time, the NFL was a nonprofit. 
So that should tell you about nonprofits. You know, you, that, that, that's because you're called a nonprofit does not mean that you are prevented from making a profit. Okay. That needs to be separate. That's an aside. Nonprofit just means that that is not your intention. That your intention is to provide a good or service to a community. Museums are a nonprofit, right? Because museums, they make money. They don't make a lot of money though, because a new museum's purpose is to provide a service, which is all of the things that they provide in the museum. If it's pictures, uh, portraits, uh, paintings, art pieces, whatever, that's what it is. We have multiple museums here in Detroit that are most of them probably shouldn't be nonprofits, but they are, you know, and there are people who really, really love the arts and they view the arts as something that's willing to be funded by government money. So they'll have to file for a grant and they'll have to become a, a nonprofit and they'll file for a grant. They'll get into some kind of art program. And then if they can prove that they provide, they have the people that they have to provide, prove it to, however, are again, going to be buddies with them. So you can, question the validity of a museum or a zoo or something like that in your neighborhood, but it's probably going to be government funded. Okay. And in doing so, they have to provide that they are, they have to provide a service and that service will be the museum itself. Now you still may have to pay a cover fee. Like here in Detroit, we don't have to pay for the DIA. Uh, I forget what it's called. Uh, uh, the DIA, yes, we don't have to pay for that anymore because it's funded by taxpayer money. And I voted against that. You know, so if you work at the DIA or you know somebody who works at the DIA, as much as I love it, I would rather pay to go in than pay and I go in there twice a year or something like that. You know, and I, I love going to the museum, but I don't see, I think it should be a for profit institution. And to be quite honest, if it was a for profit institution, it'd probably be better run, you know. It also probably would be out of business <laughs> because, you know, it's just a certain class of people really like the museums. And that's really the thing about the arts, which makes the arts a perfect money laundering scheme is because only certain kinds of people actually patronize the arts. Um, if you guys weren't paying attention during the shutdown, the pandemic, New York City allow artists to go back and do uh, what was this improvisational art or some shit they were doing on the street corners. They allowed them to do that stuff before they allowed restaurants to open back up because only certain people care about the arts. And once the arts start getting taxpayer money, classic money laundering scheme is just vote for us. We'll give you money. And that's just kind of how it works. The nonprofits, that sphere of the government that government uh, community organizational thing is so much money in there. And so you will see so many people now will not create a business. They'll create a nonprofit. They'll, Oh, we're going to do something for young boys in the community. And then they'll file for a grant almost immediately. You know, they don't have anything. They don't have books. They don't have teachers. They don't have a uh, organizational structure. They don't have a business plan. They don't have anything, but they'll go file for an LLC and then they'll go put in for a grant and that's it. And they say, Hey, we want to teach boys coping skills. And if you, you know, suck up to the right people, you'll get a contract to teach boys coping skills, whatever that means. So this is unfortunate. Um, it's screwed up, man. I feel shitty because I love Ted DiBiase, man, but I'm not going to be able to unread this. This is fucked up. You know, let, let me know what you guys think, like share and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys later, man. Peace.